Hello, this is Jose Luis here at Parametric Camp together with Arasto, who is also a Hello. member of <laughs> who's also a <laughs> member of the Parametric Camp community and whom you may know from our previous video in this series, the one for about where we were talking about Remo Sharp. In this video, I just wanted to make a very small example and some reflection on issues of performance. Because if you're following this series, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, it's probably because you want to supersede what you can do out of the box with vanilla Grasshopper components, but also because you are reaching a level of complexity in your definitions and your Grasshopper work that is kind of outpacing what Grasshopper can keep up with. And it turns out that when you actually write your own scripts with computer programming languages or compile your own plugins, you actually gain a lot of performance. So for example, let me show you two examples or three examples here. We have an example where uh, we have a point and we want to create a very dense grid in two dimensions with those points. The way I have done this is, first of all, I've done it in vanilla Grasshopper. I've created a couple series. I've replicated the points and I have copied them as an array. If I turn this on, you can see that I have created 20, 250,000 points, which is already on the heavy side of things. And it took Grasshopper 600 milliseconds to compute this operation. All right. So ideally, what we want is to be able to achieve this performance with, uh, achieve this operation with a higher performance, like taking longer, because this, we might be able to afford 600 milliseconds, but if we actually have many operations that are this heavy, or if we start now working with this, two, this quarter million points in further operations down the road, it's going to be heavy and, and, and tedious very, very fast. So you can see that, for example, if I try to mimic the same operation, I'm going to turn this the visualization off. If I try to mimic the same operation with a compile component, one that does everything, in one go and it's actually being compiled like the way we will do plugins in further videos down this series if i turn if i enable this video you can see that the same amount of points actually a little a few more points so more than a quarter million are actually being generated in a sixth of the time in in 100 milliseconds which is great in terms of performance it's actually a huge game but what about c sharp scripting well, it turns out that if I replicate the same example in a vanilla C sharp script component, so for example, uh, with a double nested for loop, taking the coordinates of the first point and using that to generate new points, if I turn this on, what we can see is that it actually takes longer than this one component to execute. Actually, C sharp script for this one particular example has worse performance, surprisingly, than doing it the vanilla grasshopper way. When, I, when we were putting together this example, we expected the performance of this one to be better than vanilla grasshopper, but a little worse than compiled components. Because in general, the way performance in grasshopper works is that using grasshopper vanilla components is the least performative way. It takes more time just because grasshopper has a lot of overhead of all the individual operations that need to happen in all the different components, but also all the overhead of communication, data transfer between the components, et cetera, et cetera. So if you are a, an intermediate advanced Grasshopper user, you may have noticed that large Grasshopper definitions are very heavy and very laggy, okay? Uh, we expected the c -sharp component to be better because what c -sharp components do is that it you can bundle and pack all the operations that you could do with individual vanilla grasshopper components into one single script that then gets compiled in the background by grasshopper and then gets executed. Sorry, uh, quick intermission. This is me from the future. So in the video that you were just watching, we were discussing how we were finding weird that the C sharp version of the implementation was actually not so performative. And after the recording of that video, one of the members of the Parametric Camp community, Teams Design, he actually brought up the issue that the problem with this component is that when um, the problem with this component is that it turns out that point 3D, it's the native point type that 
Rhino Common implements, but it turns out that when points are exchanged between different instances of, grad, of grasshopper components, they actually get wrapped inside of this wrapper class that is called the grasshopper point because um, that brings in a sort of like other other sets of functionalities and other stuff that um, that grasshopper needs to do its job properly. And it was that conversion at the end of the component from point 3Ds to grasshopper points that was actually causing the issue of the performance. So it turns out that if we do this tiny trick, which is instead of relying on the component itself to do the transformation between point 3D, if what we do is we just say, I'm going to create a grasshopper point, all right? And I'm going to turn this into an array of grasshopper points. If I run this, I'm going to get a bunch of errors here because I cannot convert implicitly here from point 3D to grasshopper point. So what we need to do is we need to say here, I'm going to create a new grasshopper point and I'm going to pass in this new point that I'm creating. Well, do I have overloads for? No, I don't have overloads for parameters. So I actually have to construct the point and then wrap it inside of the grasshopper point. And then if I run this, this code actually works much better. And let's just reload. So let me recompute everything. So if I recompute the code, you can see that now it's actually extremely performative. So the whole thing took 25 milliseconds, which actually outperformed this component, which is natural because this component actually does more stuff than just a simple grid. It outputs the points, but it also outputs cell outlines. It also outputs lists with rectangles. So it just performs more operation and that's what it's a little heavier. If it did only the rectangles, it would probably be much nice, much, much leaner. So it turns out that because of the amount of elements, it was the conversion that was causing all this overhead and it was a very noticeable overhead, so one second. That doesn't mean that when you are writing c -sharp script components, you should work with grasshopper types. You should definitely not do that. You should definitely stick to a point or to like Rhino common types for the geometry. It's only when you output that information that the grasshopper component needs to do this conversion. So if you do the conversion manually yourself for data that you're outputting, you will gain that performative advantage, but you do not need to do that for data types that you're only going to be using in your algorithm for manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so that was a quick side note. Let us go back to the main video. So what Arasto and I wanted to share with you is that in general, vanilla grasshopper components, arrays, and definitions that have many of these are the least performative way to go. c -sharp scripting gives you an advantage on that and compiling complex operations into native plugin components is usually the best way to achieve performance. However, it has been both of our experience Etc. Etc. And if we were to replicate the same amount of operations with a C# -sharp script component, very soon the compiled C# -sharp script component will overweight and will have much better performance than a complex grasshopper definition. Is that correct, Arasto? What do you think about this? Yeah, that is completely correct. And well, to me, like in my experience, the reason I prefer to use like C sharp components instead of like writing everything in um, in grasshopper is, well, first of all, of course, it has something to do with performance, but of course, writing things in C sharp is going to give you much more, um, you, you can do a lot more with writing C sharp. And uh, like, for example, you can do, even in terms of like performance, you can do uh, multi-threading, you can do like a lot of stuff that, are gonna drastically reduce the time that you're gonna be spending on a calculation. So that it's the difference between like 30 minutes and seven minutes or two, like all the way down to like three minutes for mm -hmm. the same operation. Now, 
That's one thing. Also, you get to use everything that comes with Rhino and Grasshopper, along with everything that comes with C Sharp itself. So that is a very cool thing to have inside the environment of Grasshopper. But the best of both worlds. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Well, um, <clears throat> maybe at some point we record an example where we actually show that level of Im improvement in performance. Also, as Arastu is mentioning, multi-threading is also something that is possible when you are in C Sharp world and when you are in compilation world, but it's not so possible in vanilla Grasshopper, I believe. I'm actually not entirely sure about that. But uh, multi-threading is always, is always something that gives you an advantage because you're using all the CPUs concurrently at the same time. All right, something that Arasto likes a lot because he likes like real time things working together, et cetera, et cetera, as we have seen in previous videos. <laughs> All right, so yes, so writing your own code typically leads to much better performance, especially if you are able to supersede C sharp scripting, which is great, but it has some drawbacks, and you can start creating the same thing that you have write, you are writing in C sharp, but compiling it natively into plugins that you can uh, load into Grasshopper, that you can distribute to the world, et cetera, et cetera, which is going to be the main topic that we're going to engage in in the next videos down the road in this playlist, in this course, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, which I'm actually really looking forward to. All right. So thank you very much, Arasto, for joining in this um, coffee talk about performance issues in Grasshopper, you know? <laughs> of course, and thank you very much for having me. And thanks to you, the viewer, who are watching this video for dealing with our sloppy coding and our poor examples <laughs> to, my, to try to make a case about things that we can't really show, you know? But anyway, it's we can talk from experience uh, if you trust us a little bit. Anyway, thank you very much. If you liked what you saw, maybe consider subscribing to the channel or liking this video. And I will see you in further videos in this series where we're actually going to start creating our own plugins from scratch. No C Sharp scripting anymore. I mean, we're going to be using C Sharp, script, C -sharp as a programming language, but not the scripting component. We're going to create our own native plugins like Arasto does in his free time. Thank you very much and see you on the next video. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.